What is up guys? This is Astro here and we are back with another Air Mix Strike video. Now, I know it's been a little bit, it's been a little while, uh, I apologize, I haven't really been playing or casting for a while, uh, with all this craziness that's been going around, I had to move out of college, and honestly, I've just, uh, haven't been enjoying Air Mech as much as I used to recently, I've been getting back into other games like CS and Overwatch and Terraria, and yeah, I just haven't had the time to play it air mech that much recently but the past few days i've been playing a lot of 3v3s and we had some really really great games and i thought there was like some cool concepts that i could teach you guys mainly how to make plays in air mech strike now when you get to the highest level the highest tier you know all your build orders you know how to capture outposts you know maps you know dogfighting you know everything right how do you win games now that's something that comes with a little bit more than practice kind of like intuitive right but you have to learn how to kind of analyze the situation look at the team comps look at what mechs your enemy your enemy your opponents are using and figure out what to do in that situation to get yourself enough of an advantage to finish off the enemy for it now there's a lot of things that you can do in varying situations it kind of depends but basically you have to take an account of all the information that you have and figure out what you can do with that information to help you win games. And it's different. It's different based on maps and who you're playing as well as what mechs they're playing and what units are on the field. So we're going to take a look at a few examples here. This first one is on Duel. It's from 3v3 you played either yesterday or the day before, something like that. But uh, uh, these are all me, by the way. This is me playing. So I'll sort of like walk you guys through the thought process that I had behind all the moves I decided to make all right so as you can see we're in this 3v3 on duel and we have mid the carbon team has mid okay so we're doing good right now pretty much but the thing is the red team can easily come back into this they have good position they have good unit comp we don't really have as secure of a hold on mid as you'd like to see in order to sort of take this advantage and push to mid but as you can see here I'm doing something a little bit strange I'm not really fighting in the mid fight I'm stacking some butchers and some creeps over here. So my idea here is if you look at the red team's team comp, this is not something that you can really micro into, okay? So look at what we have. We have a few longhorn, we have artillery. We're just sort of doing this distant artillery fight. We're trying to get some grinders up, maybe use the grinders to sort of soak up the damage and micro up our busters. That can work certain times, but it's also kind of a little bit risky, right? But so we have to make a play here in order to get enough of an advantage to win this game. We have to make a play. We have to get through this unit clump, get some more space, kill some units, cheese an outpost, something like that. But I don't think we're going to cheese an outpost easily here, especially considering who we're playing. We're playing very good players here. So my idea is stack some butchers here. OK, so this is not something new, but this is something that you don't really see a lot of people decide to do, especially in the middle of a game or four minutes, 40 seconds into a game. So my idea is to stack some butchers here push these butchers on Y and shred all these units. If you can see, there's no Gaddy here. There's not a single Gaddy. There's just a lot of artillery. There's a lot of busters. There's some T45 and a ratchet, okay? This is not something you can micro into. It's not something you can drop into really, but it's definitely something that a huge push of infantry would completely destroy. So this is, that, that's kind of like my thought process behind this is just to stack some infantry. And you can kind of see how that's gonna go. Here, here it is. I'm pushing the infantry on Y, okay? Cause, so you have to know your, your com kind of custom command paths for this. You know that if you push infantry on Y here, they're going to take this path to get to the fort shortest path possible. So we're starting to micro up right about now, but we still can't really fully micro into this unit clump until now. And Pro Pro Bro did really good. He got a kill on support receive. So we're, they're already down a player, and they're not really positioned to take this. And now all the butchers show up. We're going to place them on C, and butchers just going to shred all of these units right as we're microing up. Now this is a huge play. Watch the upkeep swing. Like it was pretty even before, 60 to 54. Now all these units are dead. And if you look at the map advantage, look at how many units we have compared to how many units they have. It is a great play to kill a lot of units really, really quickly. And that's the sort of plays that you have to make to consistently win games, especially at the highest tier. Now this is the example on duo. We're gonna look at another example real quick. Okay, we're back. So this is a game on Twin Peaks that we played today, just a few hours ago, before I started recording this. Now, if you look at the teams, we're playing against Make Wars, Pro Pro Pro, and 8. Very good players, okay? And here, it's me, Leia Assassin, this guy named Timo Strategy. 
Now, Timo Strategy, I don't know who he is. He's kind of a new player, and you can tell by the way he plays throughout this game. He's going to basically just spam Bucky's, spam Shooters. So we're kind of at a disadvantage in just pure terms of skill. I feel like this Timo Strategy guy is not as good of a player as the rest of the people in this lobby. So we have to do something to kind of make up for that in order to help us stay in this game, get, get an advantage, be in a better position, right? So... Normally on Twin Peaks, the normal opening is everybody goes straight for bottom, straight for bottom. You will have a huge bottom fight, and maybe you can test mid a little later after going straight for bottom. Now, that's how usually people play, but I decide, okay, I can't really afford to go... Where am I? Okay, five. I'm five. I can't really afford to go all in on bottom, because if we play a bottom straight up bottom fight, we're probably going to lose, right? So I place two Gemini over here to kill this T99, go and distract a little over here, and then I go super hard on top, right? I take top as fast as I can with all the units over here. I even drop a Necro over here to resurrect this uh, this Gemini that got killed by that neutral T99. So I'm placing so I'm placing a lot of pressure over here on top, and I'm going to take top soon. And the thing is, the green team hasn't even scattered this. See, this is the big assumption that I've made, is that my green team knows that they can win a straight up bottom fight so they're gonna go super heavy on bottom and pro pro Row finally scouts it but it's too late i've already taken it right i already have a bunch of units over here now he's gonna start to place some stuff over here he just has ages has some random stuff because he wasn't really ready for this he didn't expect me to take top super fast but i guess he noticed that i was in there at the bottom fight so i'm probably doing something over here at top so now i have top we're just gonna fast forward a little bit okay so my teammates have pretty much taken bottom so now I'm going to place a lot of pressure on top, okay? I'm going to start microing units over. going to have some artillery over here. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Sorry for the little right mate. Okay, so I noticed he doesn't have a lot of units over here at top, right? So now I'm going to put a lot of pressure. I'm going to start moving over units. A, moving over a bunch of units. I'm moving over a lot of units. And now Pro Pro Pro, he's pinging to his teammates. He's hitting Z. He's hitting, he's saying, oh my god, they're, they're, he's microing up on top. I don't have enough units to defend. I need help. Okay, so now both Makors and Zanetti are going to fly back over here to try and deal with this. So this is my plan all along. It's to bring over as many people over to this top, to this top uh, close outpost as I can and try and get their attention away from bottom so my teammates can do something at bottom. But over here, I notice that, oh, all three mechs are over here at bottom, right? I get a kill on Pro Pro Pro. Big, huge kill, okay? And we're trying to micro up, but the thing is we're probably going to lose this fight. We don't really have the units over here. So here I am. Flying over to bottom, okay, Pro 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 is dead, the other two are, are like over here uh, distracted with this outpost, so they're not really noticing, and over here all I'm doing is just microing up all my units at bottom and killing everything, because there's no mech support, these units are free, and I noticed that because all three mechs are up here dealing with this, that nobody's over here guarding this, and then we notice that we kill everything, like all their ground attacking units, immediately push, I immediately go for the neutralize so they can't pull any more units out of their queue, Outpost is neutralized, Makor is dead to a flacker, Pro 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 flying away. All these units are just going to get cleaned up, and it's pretty much free take for us. And then all we have to do is defend top successfully, push into this outpost, and then we win the game. Huge advantage gotten from small play, going straight for mid, distracting all the enemy mechs over here, and clearing top, clearing bottom while nobody is there to take care of the units. It's little plays like that that kind of differentiate like the mid tier from the super super high tier is is how you win games consistently is doing stuff like that noticing where the units are on the field where the mechs are on the field what mechs they're playing kind of playing the map to your advantage as well as playing the players to your advantage now we're going to look at a few more examples all right we're back so this is now a game on bio so pretty much same teams uh we have lord of lords now instead of that timo guy and russo swapped in for zanetti who had to leave uh so a few adjustments but not too much so this is a game on bio and i knew this was bio beforehand because we were in a custom lobby obviously so we had to decide the map so someone suggested bio so i was like okay biohazard so instead of playing normally or i changed one unit in my loadout Instead of getting Longhorn, or instead of like something, I don't know, I swapped something for Boomers. Now, here's my thought process, okay? Everyone ferries over to this island, right, with just plain tanks, okay? Just plain tanks. No one's going to make a Gaddy in the first, like, 25 seconds of the game, right? So, Boomers are going to be super effective here because they're ferrying over their tanks in super tight clumps over here to this island, and they don't have this outpost captured yet. So, 
there's a golden opportunity here to kill a lot of units really early on in the early game. So I'm going to drop the boomers. I'm going to land distract. The boomers are going to go off. They're going to kill one, two, three, four tanks. The rest of these are super low. Lord of Lords is going to finish off one. He's going to finish off maybe two. Drop two more, four more boomers. Going to get the Dillo kill. Going to get maybe the long run kill. Not quite the long run kill. So these boomers are going to die. But now the blue team's at a huge disadvantage, right? We've neutralized top. We're going to take it. Lay Assassin's going to bring over some infantry, right? So we're going to have top. And they don't even have any units here at bottom. Lord of Lords already ferrying over four Longhorn over here. All the units that they're bringing over, I'm just instantly killing with my boomer drops. So they can't even have a position or a hold on, on this bottom island until they bring over some gaddies. And if they're bringing over daddies, they don't have tanks to deal with the tanks that Lord of Lords is faring over. And Russo gets killed by a hat that works out pretty well in our favor. Lord of Lords also does go down, which is kind of bad for us. But look at the units that they have. They're at way upkeep. They have an upkeep advantage right now, but all of their upkeep is not in units that's going to help them hold this outpost, right? They're already going hard on mid. Their, their attention split. They don't really have this outpost under their control, right? And we're going to come over here, dogfight. Pro Pro is going to get killed by Lord of Lords. Great kill by Lord of Lords. Great play. Kills kind of decide games, too. But... Russo's going to get taken down. Lord Lords is great stuff here. But even if they didn't get those kills, I think we win this fight because we have we have Longhorns to their Gaddies. And Longhorns are going to win up straight up duels versus Gaddies anytime in a mid mid fight sort of like this, right? And we're going to start ferrying over Busters even. And we're going to slowly clean up these units, neutralize this outpost. And then once we have both corners, it's kind of just a snowball from there because we have more upkeep, we have more credits. We even managed to cheese this outpost. Once we cheese this outpost, it's game over, right? Because these out units are completely isolated. There's no way they can even ferry them back. They can't save what little units they have left. You can see upkeep advantage 50 to 30. We're 20 units ahead or 20 upkeep ahead. We're going to take this outpost, kill all of these units. I even have necros. I could resurrect all of these if I wanted to and put us at even more of an advantage. And you can see how that small play in the beginning with just a few boomers completely changed the tide of the game. Completely. We're two minutes in and we've already won the game. Just because I built four boomers at the start instead of two Gemini. Because I knew what map are we playing, who are we playing against, what mechs do they have. What can I do in this situation that's going to get me an advantage? Now we're going to look at one last example. All right, so we're back with another 3v3 on Salt. Now, the teams are a little bit different. Now we have Red Dog and Wolf Cub over here. Very, very, very good players. So it's a pretty balanced game against some super high tier players, right? So this is a play I make immediately off the bat, right? I think, all right, uh, what mechs are they playing? So you see they have a Warthog and they have a Paladin and only one Striker, right? So these are slow mechs. I'm in a Striker, right? Slow mechs are not going to be able to chase me down and kill me out of the game. Okay, by playing versus Helix or I'm playing versus a lot of strikers, then I can't really afford to go for some harass. But I'm thinking, okay, I'm up against two slow mechs and one striker. And that striker is make wars. I can probably get away from make wars if I'm conservative enough about my health, play well enough to snipe some infantry and get out. So I'm thinking, okay, I can delay the green team enough to give my team an advantage, right? So that's my role right now in this game. I'm thinking right off the bat, 10 seconds in, how do I get an advantage? And that's by delaying the green team enough so that my team can get an advantage at mid. So I'm immediately going to fly over here, try to snipe some infantry. Don't quite get it, right? But now they're kind of wary about me. They know that, oh, he's probably going to try and come back, maybe. So they're going super hard in on this corner, or this close outpost, right? And I'm thinking, okay, I didn't really get anything off there. I need to go try again. So I'm going to zoom in again. And my goal here is to snipe infantry to delay this capture, right? I'm just going to snipe some more. See, so make wars. He sees me over here. I'm going to snipe one infantry, two infantry. And then I see Wolf Club low on health. Bam, get a kill on Wolf Club too. That's huge. That's huge. I'm delaying them so much just by me on my presence in this area. Okay, normally I probably wouldn't pick up the kill on Wolf Club if Wolf Club was playing a little bit better, a little bit more conservative. But I'm going to get the kill on Wolf Club. I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to survive. That's huge. If you manage to live after harassing, that's super big because then they don't even get the benefit of killing you. So me delaying them, delaying them and capturing this outpost, killing Wolf Club, delaying them, allows Car my team, Carbon team, to take this uh, kill all the neutrals here at mid, very over, and immediately gain an advantage over here at mid. And basically, we're just going to have mid for free without even enough of a fight. And then we're eventually going to wipe up all these units and go on to have a strong foothold at, the, at mid. And we do end up losing this game. I think Lay Assassin lags out. It is British server, which is not that great for him. So it was pretty much like a 2v3 for the rest of the game. We did lose, but you can but you can see the play that I made in the beginning got us a huge advantage that positioned us well enough to have to potentially win the game. 
like if we get mid super early in the game like this then we're at a huge advantage especially on a map like salt we have more credits we have more income and we can we have the positional advantage too this is easily pressure up on this outpost once we have enough artillery we could even do like a bottom fight a middle push we have so many options available to us just because at 10 seconds into the game i decided okay this is my job this is how i'm gonna help my team win the game so i hope this kind of gives you guys a few ideas of how to like play how to make plays in uh, Air Max Strike, you gotta kind of gotta be thinking about how exactly you can do things that's gonna help you win the game. And yeah, I uh, hope this guy's helped you out. Hope this helped you guys out. And uh, maybe I'll do some more casts or some more uploads. If you guys have replays, please please send them in. Link will be in the description to the replay manager or not not the replay manager, whatever the replay submitter. And yeah, uh, I'll try and play some more. Try and do some more casts kind of getting back into the game a little bit but yeah i'll see you guys this has been astro hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys learned something from this peace